So for those of you who don't know, George Monbiot is a British writer and environmentalist. He also calls himself a vegan. Now, those of you who watched my discussion with Cosmic Skeptic on wild animal suffering will know we discussed a potential conflict between environmentalism and people who actually care about the well-being of animals. And I think the video we're going to go through today is a good example of that conflict. So George Monbiot has released a documentary focusing on the environmental destruction caused by animal agriculture. And after watching this documentary, I came to the conclusion that George Monbiot is one of the stupidest people on the planet. We've just seen two deer down there by the river. I know this is the right thing to do, but I feel like I'm gonna go and commit a murder. I'm an environmental journalist, a campaigner, and a vegan who hates everything about shooting animals. All the deer are just down in the hollow. But I'm armed with a radical plan for preventing ecological catastrophe. Which part of the country represents the nation's natural beauty better than the Lake District? In 2017, it was given world heritage status to protect its spectacular landscape. But something crucial is missing from these hills. A lot of people see this as a beautiful landscape, and it's true that the shapes of the hills are stunning. But to me, it's an ecological disaster zone. These bare hills were once covered with a rich mosaic of trees, of shrubs, all sorts of other plants teeming with wild animals. So I want to draw your attention to how much George values nature here because he finds it so aesthetically pleasing. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy beautiful landscapes as much as the next soy boy, but there are more important things than what I find aesthetically pleasing. And I just think it's important to point out this at this early stage because it really does show how skewed his mentality is when it comes to morals, and we'll see a bit more of that later. He also seems really upset there are less animals in the wild than there were previously. And I know this may go against your intuition, but having more animals in the wild isn't necessarily a good thing. It may be that the lives of wild animals are overwhelmingly a net negative. In terms of their well-being, they experience much more suffering than they experience pleasure. Uh, I talked about this in more detail in my video, The Vegan Blind Spot, so I'll link that somewhere. But if that is the case, it could be argued that it is preferable that there are less animals in the wild. Of course, you may only agree with me here if you actually care about the individual animals, their experience. If, on the other hand, you care more about nature intrinsically, if you value nature, or if you just find nature aesthetically pleasing and care most about this sensory experience, then perhaps you would want more animals regardless of their experience. Of course, appealing to nature is tricky, since there are many things that are natural, that aren't good or desirable. For instance, malaria is natural, but we wouldn't find it acceptable to let children die of malaria because it's a natural process. And of course, if you know anything about ethics, you'll know that human sensory pleasure, whether from seeing animals or tasting animals, shouldn't be given higher importance than the immense suffering of animals. This farm has been in Abby's family for three generations. When you're looking at your cows like this, what do you feel, Abby? They are my father, they're my grandfather, they're, you know, they're just, yeah, they're brilliant. It makes me really proud. I, sometimes you, you forget that you're producing food. This farmer thinks about one thing when she sees these animals. Money. How can I use these animals to maximise my profits? I'm seeing these as great big carbon-releasing machines who are taking up a load of land which could otherwise be used for an amazing restoration of wildlife, for sucking carbon out of the air, just seems to me like an extravagance that we can't afford anymore. Well, I'm a food industry. I'm very important for you. I'm important for you three times a day to well, make sure that you except survive. Except I don't eat any of your products. Shame on you. So now the farmer is suggesting that it is immoral it's immoral not to buy her products. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm now selling these soy boy jumpers, by the way, guys. And after this video, I'm going to go outside and shame people who aren't wearing them. 
My biggest problem with livestock farming is how inefficient it is. Well, veganism isn't about how inefficient animal farming is. It is about abstaining from animal exploitation and torture. I mean, theoretically, you could find a sustainable and efficient way of exploiting and torturing animals. But as vegans, we would still boycott the industry. Hello, George. Hi, Michael. Hi, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you. Hi, Mike. Well, thanks for um, letting us into this wonderful shed with all your salmon pictures on the walls. Happier days, perhaps? Happier days, yeah. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we can't even fish at all. It's the algae that's stopping us from fishing. Oh, you poor things. My heart, my heart bleeds for you. It really does. You can't pull sentient beings out of the water and watch them suffocate to death. You know, I really hope your friends and family are with you for this difficult period of your life. Most people would laugh if fox hunters try to get sympathy for not being allowed to let a pack of dogs rip a fox to shreds. So it is beyond me how these fish killers think that they deserve some sympathy. The pleasure you get from killing the fish is not more important than the suffering that you are inflicting onto them. It is literally pouring down the drain. This is our fertility disappearing towards the sea yeah. and doing so much damage along the way. A famously beautiful river like the Wye should be a rich habitat for all kinds of life. There is a certain irony with them showing an animal being eaten alive while they're trying to portray the ideal beauty that he wants to see in nature. This is a shocking state of affairs. And you know what really gets to me? It's the double standards. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I didn't, I didn't quite catch that. And you know what really gets to me? It's the double standards. <laughs> Livestock farmer Ilted Dunsford wants to replace his cows with meat he's grown from animal stem cells. So I would be able to go to a shop and buy something which is cultured meat and it will have come out of this room. Yes, so cells in and we can get sausages out. Right. Scientists unveiled the first hamburger to be grown from stem cells in a televised stunt in 2013. This burger cost around £220,000 to make. I'm sorry, what? This burger cost around £220,000. <laughs> Experience have you got with the shooting? No, no, none whatsoever. This is all new to me. Not taking a life with a rifle? Uh, no, never. No, no. Okay. no. Not, not that I'd admit to it anyway. No, no. If you have a look at the animal here. I'm going to do something I never thought I would. Attempt to hunt and shoot a beautiful animal. So you're looking to be getting the bullet in here. Yeah. Okay? Which is a very, very quick death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, this is um, quite heavy duty. My head knows it's right. My heart is in a different place entirely. Three quarters of a million deer are roaming the Scottish Highlands. Their population has exploded because there are no natural predators like wolves and lynx to keep them in check. Like sheep, they've grazed out the trees. Thomas isn't planting any trees up here. Nature is finding its own way. So if we could come back here in 50 years time, what would we see? I think we'll see a landscape a little bit like Southwest Norway, where you've got lots of mixture of different trees and shrubs. And it's able to establish itself because the deer numbers have been brought down Yes, that's correct. You know what, George? We could also make cities much more aesthetically pleasing. Why don't we just get millions and millions of people, line them up, and just shoot them dead? That way we can restore these, these unnatural cities back to the original natural landscapes of beauty and wonder. Uh, no, because some things are more important than that. I feel like I'm gonna go and commit a murder. This goes against every instinct but I know it's the right thing to do.
So th this is just not a normal reaction to someone doing the right thing. And I suppose this is the problem with environmentalists who value aesthetically pleasing landscapes over sentient beings. Vegans are vegan because we don't want animals to be killed and tortured. If you're vegan because you like looking at trees and you're against deforestation, you're plant-based. You are not actually vegan. This is the grim reality of stopping deer from trashing the highlands. One day, I hope natural predators like wolves will do it instead. So, for me, this is the most insane part of the entire documentary. One day, I hope that wolves will do it instead. Do you think, from the deer's perspective, it would be better if they were getting ripped apart by wolves instead? It's actually worse if you were to introduce wolves and wolves were doing this instead. Put yourself in your victim's perspective. It is not better to introduce a creature that's going to hunt them down and eat them alive. And George, please go and look up the definition of an appeal to nature fallacy. It feels right to eat this animal because killing it has caused no ecological damage. I could kill you without causing any ecological destruction. And tempting as it may be, it wouldn't be ethical. George, your perception of right and wrong is so confused. And you are not, and never were, vegan. Imagine what could happen if the subsidies we pay in Britain for farming were used instead for rewilding. Rather than damaging our living systems, this money, our money, would rebuild them. Introducing natural predators as a means of population control is evil. And just put it in a human context and people would think it sounds ridiculous. Imagine a tribe of indigenous people. They're overpopulating, they're causing problems for the environment. Would you be okay with introducing bears to hunt them down and eat them alive? No. So if you wouldn't do it to humans, don't do it to non-humans. At my final port of call, governments are doing just that. This land beside the River Rhine has been turned from a dairy and maize farm into a thriving ecosystem. Every way I look, I'm seeing something which makes my heart just go <laughs> because it's so lovely. The dragonflies, the frogs, the birds, the wind in the trees, I mean, it's beautiful. The sound the of sound, poplars. The sound of those poplars. It's almost as if they're singing. They're probably screaming. <laughs> this just kind of sums up the, um, the documentary really for me. It's like he's going through this beautiful landscape and he's, he's telling us how much he's enjoying it. The smells, the sights, what, what he can hear, it's so beautiful, so, so much pleasure for him. Well, great, George. I'm sure that the sensory pleasure you're having really justifies murdering animals. Okay, so to conclude, George is not vegan. He is a plant-based environmentalist who values sensory pleasure and nature over the experience of sensitive creatures. I think this is a good example of a conflict between environmentalism and veganism. These are two very distinct movements with different interests. So George Monbiot is giving a talk on the 11th of February in London. And there is a protest against him, which I would encourage you all to go to if you can. I think we need to show people that the sentient creatures who live on this planet with us, they are the reason we value the earth. They are the reason we should care about the environment. We shouldn't give the earth any intrinsic value in itself. Guess what, George? The only reason planets and ecosystems matter is because we need to improve the lives of the individuals who live within them. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoy my content, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. It's what gives me the capacity to work on bigger projects outside of YouTube. I am now working on a documentary that is only made possible by my Patreon team. So thank you so much. And I will put a link in the comments below for anyone interested. Uh, but thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. We're in a densely populated part of the UK. And this is because humans are causing so much ecological destruction. At this moment, 
the most practical and efficient way to deal with the problem is to cull them. I know that this is the right thing to do, but I can't help but feel like I'm about to commit a murder. I just hope that one day it will be wolves doing this instead.